Just another brother with another humble question. Just another brother with another humble question. Uh. Welcome to A Brother With Questions. I am your host, B. Period. And I appreciate you for joining me. Woo! It's it's been a been about a week now since the end of the election, and uh, I don't know about you, but I'm tired of listening to the analyzations right now. <laughs> it's it's over, man. It's it's done. I got it. We need time to fill on TV, but you know the 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 interesting thing about it all is that I see it now. There's been a transition. So before we were talking about the failure of the Democratic Party. And now we've moved to the failure of the VP Harris's team. And so I had to laugh because in my feed today, um, before I was recording this, I noticed that I saw two prominent people that have now written, written articles, written, uh, done a whole segment uh, or several segments about the failure of VP Harris's team and how they weren't really out to support her. And so I, I just find this funny. Um, she lost. It was her opportunity. Uh, I personally believe this was her final opportunity. And unfortunately it didn't work out. Uh, president Trump is about to be coronated in a couple of months here as our new president. And we'll see where it goes. Uh, he's certainly been on the, been, been talking about a lot of new appointments, uh, potential appointments. They still have to be approved, but uh, maybe another time I'll come back to that. But for today, today, uh, before we get started, uh, please like, subscribe to the channel. I appreciate it. That's how we grow. Uh, we've grown a little bit here over the last couple of weeks, so I appreciate it. But tonight, uh, I wanted to dive in something different. Uh, cause I've been a little, a little politicked out. And so, um, this, this man has been coming up on my, on my feed for, for uh, a couple of weeks now. And, and, and I, and I said, let me dive in let me listen to his, some of his conversations. So, uh, his name is, and, and I don't know if I'm pronouncing this correctly, but when you read it, it's, it's just Frank Zanu or Zanu. I'm not sure about that last part, but, but that's his name. And so if you, if you just Google him, Frank. Zanu, he's got this organization that he refers to as Project Rethink, and he is challenging, or this is my description of it, he's challenging the norms of how people think, and so uh, he has a podcast, and his podcast basically has him bringing on people who have a particular opinion, and then he spends however long he de decides to talk to these people in this particular video, he spent about 30 minutes challenging the ideas that were brought forth. And so in this particular episode, the young lady is talking about white supremacy. And so we're going to pick up, I'm not going to do the whole video. That would be way too long, <laughs> but we're going to pick up, we're going to talk about about five minutes of the video and then, and then you can go check it out for yourself. So we're going to pick up, where the young lady is talking about what it is. The same behavior of Indians, of the Northern Europeans, of Africans, when a white man does it here, therefore you're a white supremacist. That well, is what I mean. these are groups that, this, that say they don't, they want to segregate themselves from every other race and they want to be alone because they feel like their race yes. is pure. Yes. And their race, oh, yes. so you're agreeing that their race is pure too? No, I'm saying oh, opinions. Okay. Yes, you are listening to opinions of okay. people. Yes. So they, they, sure. they believe that, mm -hmm. no, I don't want to live near you. Yes. I want to live in a segregated area. So why are you area? affirming, therefore, these people are white supremacists? You're just affirming it that they are, so they so real quick, he's he's about to go in, but you know, I, I have to agree with him in this in this sense that I agree that there are people who who think or or want to think of themselves as superior. As he does. I challenge the idea that in twenty twenty four there is a large body, whether you want to call it the government 
uh, association that is acting on behalf of white supremacy. I challenge that. Yes, a group opinion, fine, but I'm saying nowhere in the Constitution of America or today's laws and rulings when we all ha we have our representatives, mm -hmm. has there been a stamp, an approval, a vote to say, yes, people in this country should, should recognize that we white people. It is nowhere. So even a group of people said it, like uh, white can dance, white can jump, black says it, millennia, we have the best. We say it, but everybody says something. What do you just so, and so, as you just pointed out, we can't point to, again, we're, we're looking at 2024. We know the history of this country, but we're talking about where we are today because I can't, I can't go back and legislate history. Um, we can only reflect on it. And so we can reflect on what history may say, but then we still have to live in today. And, and that's where I, I challenge a lot of people in your daily lives today. How much supremacy, quote unquote, white supremacy, do you really see as you walk in, in, in November 2024? How much of that do you really see? Just described is actually overtly and explicitly in South Korea, where I live for two years. You cannot even just date and walk the streets of 1991 when I was in Korea. He, ha he doesn't have to be related to the woman. He will hit your head with the, an iron bar and you will die. Mm -hmm. They killed two American soldiers in a Filipino. Koreans believe in eugenism, what you described. We don't want our to be mixed with anybody. You marry one, you go away with it. That's nothing wrong, that's what they want. But the Koreans are not saying, therefore, if you go to Flushing where the Koreans are, and because they don't like marrying, intermarrying with people, I go say Korean supremacy. Even if a group of Koreans said it, Japanese said it back in the Second World War, telling all Asians Jap Japan is not just an Asian country that they are actually superior. But that is not a national. Nobody got hurt because somebody said that. Mm -hmm. And just because a group of people said something like that doesn't make it become an institution that I can see and touch and go there and find. I like that because you know that's that's very traditional too. I mean, it's a be. I mean, a lot of most people feel that way. Black people feel that way. Black people would prefer, for the most part, this is them being honest. They would prefer that you you quote unquote keep it in the family. That's what they would prefer. Now, that's not to say that if you don't keep it in the family, that they're not going to love the person you bring in, because that's not true. Most black families are going to love and bring in whoever you bring to the table. But if they're talking about what their preference is, they would definitely prefer to keep it in the family. And that does not mean or even suggest that is about supremacy. It's not. It's not about supremacy. People, it's not there. It doesn't affect anybody's daily life in America. It's a lie. Because so one. White supremacy does not. No, it doesn't at all. They're proud boys. They go on the streets wearing hoods and drinking uh, Mountain Dew and they tattoo themselves with broken tooth. They don't affect anybody's life. What I'm trying to say is this that I, I Asians who live I, in I, I Asians don't... live in America, they're not white. We never find them on television crying that their business is not working well because of white supremacists. Middle Eastern people live in America. They're not white. Why is it that the white supremacists only affect black people and not the others who are not white? So white supremacists. <laughs> I love that statement right there. Because that's, that's so true when you just think about the concepts. Every time. And, and I don't know. It's almost like it's in a public contract. Well, I live in the South where we do get a lot of public systems. But every time you have a Publix open, you know what opens right next to the public? Chinese restaurant, Chinese takeout restaurant. Let me say that way. Every single time in the South, there is a Chinese takeout restaurant. Now, and generally speaking, they all seem to be successful. And, and so I love this analogy of why aren't they on TV constantly talking about how white supremacy is hurting their businesses? 
why why doesn't it always seem to be us? You know, one of the classics, you know, if you ever watch The View, I try not to, but if, <laughs> if you watch The View, I mean, Sonny Halston, a successful lawyer. Uh, I'm not sure. I don't even know if she's black. I, I know she's got some Puerto Rican. I, I don't know if she's got a black, black, black mother or father too, but, um, but she goes on that show every day, almost. It seems like it's every day and talks about how white people are racist and how white people are holding black people back. And yet here she is a successful lawyer, a successful commentator on, on a very popular show married to a man who I believe is a doctor, medical doctor. So we got two successful, again, I know the minority, so we'll just go with that. Two successful minority people living their best life in America, but yet every day you tell me about how racist this country is. Where is the Asian lady? Where is the Asian commentator talking every day about how bad it is for their people? Where's the Middle Eastern guy who seems to always open up a gas station? Not even a great gas station all the time. It could be a hood gas station. So they only got four pumps outside, but a convenience store. Even they find a way to be successful in the hood. Where are ours? How can they do it, but we can't? And it's not like, what is it? What's what? Uh, what it, it's not like we can't do it too. But yet we watch all these other people. And then we'll even complain about the fact that they supposedly, you know, hate us in their stores. But yet we go every day. And their businesses are successful. I'm just saying, there's, there's something, there's a disconnect that we have in this conversation or there's a, or a dishonesty that we have in this conversation. And, and I'm still trying to figure out why, when most of us are living our lives amongst white people to the height of whatever success we have deemed available to ourselves. What do I mean by that? For those of us that have decided to go to college, we've gotten a career based on the degree that we earn or we don't because we've chosen not to. We, for those of us who are in entrepreneurs, we are as successful as our hustle is. Even when we've had challenges along the way, whether it be loan challenges, whether it be building blocks because of regulations, those of us who were hungry enough found a way to overcome all of those. So if, if we, when we are hungry, we find a way to succeed in spite of whatever the challenges are. But yet we will tell everybody coming behind us that it's hard out here because of white supremacy. We got to stop. We got to stop. Don't go out and terror people. White supremacists don't go and lynch people. White supremacists don't go out and no, threaten KKK, people. KKK Americans did lynch people in the South during the slavery. Mm -hmm. KKK burned torches on people's lawns because they don't want you to be in their neighborhoods. I would describe it that way. A group of people did that. It's true. Okay. Yeah, but why do you keep saying white supremacists? So let me ask, maybe it's a grammar. When you say white supremacists, what do you mean? A group of people who believe that they are superior than any other race. So what does it mean when you repeat it, this white supremacist, what does it mean? That's a good point. <laughs> are you affirming what they have said? Because you see, I'm trying to say to you, because it has happened in my own tribe, mm -hmm. there are people we know very well, we know in the Huigame district of uh, 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 Benin Republic, mm -hmm. the Abome tribe. They founded the Women Warriors. Okay. Agoshe. They are powerful. My father's tribe, my mother's tribe, we are weaklings, okay? When they are coming, we bow down and say, take, take, and go away. 
So we began to call them in a language you call here, uh, something like the hooligans. Mm -hmm. We make the name these hooligans because of what they do. We thank the French when they finally arrived. That was the only time they, they tamed them. So it's the same thing when you watch the behavior of white people, what they have done. Yes, you can make a name for them. But what you're doing is affirming. If these people can go out and, 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 and colonize successfully for years and nobody ever succeeds colonizing them, if these people can go out and take over countries and buy slaves and hold them down, and, well, they must, they must be good. Well, that's what I was... <laughs> I like that. You, 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 the person who is calling them the white supremacists, you're the one affirming what they are. Not that they are, but your affirmation that they are makes them that. And so it becomes, in my opinion, a matter of what's your conversation? Well, how do you look at them? I can tell you how I look at them. I look at them just like I look at anybody else. They're just people. At the end of the day, while there may be some who honestly, quote unquote, see themselves as superior. Number one, that group is in the minority and that group typically don't have any power other than the power that you give them. Because they don't hold offices. They're not your mayor unless you voted them that. They're not your councilman. And so if they're just a group of people in the street, right? You got me the people in the street? There's drug dealers in the street, but what power do they really have? And and so I'm gonna I'm gonna stop the video here, but I'm gonna end just with this. And and if you keep going, he keeps cooking as to why he doesn't believe white supremacy exists. And so, number one, you know, if you listen this far, you know, I, I agree with him. That's number one. But, but I, I come back to a mindset change. And so we're about to swear in um, the new president, President Donald Trump, come January. And there's a lot of people who have been talking about him as if he is about to fundamentally change how America works. He's not. There's a Congress. There's a House. There's a Senate. There's a Supreme Court. He's not going to convince all of those people to somehow change what the Constitution says and has said for a couple hundred years. I don't believe that. Number two, we've had a, we had a first term and we didn't see that happen either. Here's what I do know. He's going to make some changes. More than likely changes that will be very, very, uh, what's the word? Very welcoming to the entrepreneur community, business community. And so as his presidency will begin in January and then extend itself right for four years. There's an opportunity here. We can either sit back and keep crying about things like white supremacy and his quote unquote support of it, or we can learn what are the changes that are occurring and take advantage of it because this is Regardless of how you want to see it, this is the land of the free. This is the land where people come here from multiple countries all across the world, start businesses, some with, that don't even speak English very well, but start successful businesses. And so as a group of people like myself, black people who were born and raised in this country, it's time to stop with the excuses and start learning how to take advantage of the opportunities 
that everybody else is taking because they're not special. They're hard workers and we are too. And so I just want to encourage people in this last statement. The opportunities are coming. Let's take advantage, learn, and four years from now, be five to ten times better mentally, spiritually, and financially than we were at the end of 2024. Because if there's nothing else I believe about President Donald Trump, is Donald Trump going to watch out for the money. And if you can understand how to take advantage of the money, the money is going to be there. And on that note, I'm B period. <laughs>